that's what she looks like after a good steel wooling and uh, we've you know leveled it out pretty good I've you know taken off probably nearly half of the finish that's on there if not more and I think we're going to put one more coat on it now the directions on the oil varnish say and you see it on the internet all the time people putting this on just with their fingers no cloth or anything directly from the bottle I typically don't do it that way I have done it um, but I'm going to go ahead and do it that way this time and see if we get any different result I don't think it's going to make much difference this oil varnish is kind of self leveling and whether you put it on with a brush or a cloth or your finger I think it just does its thing you know I still don't have this little section repaired between here and here and some people would say I'm doing this all in the wrong order that's sort of true kind of give you that but on the other hand there's really not much to glue that end grain to and I'm gonna wait until I get it on the violin and I think I'll have a little bit more surface area there perhaps I hope to glue to it and in worst case scenario is that it won't be any more difficult so best case scenario is it might be a little bit easier to just wait that's why I'm waiting obviously I'll have to finish that little section but it shouldn't take much well we'll set that aside and let it dry see if that goes on any smoother I don't know if it will don't think it really makes much difference and we'll set that aside as well I believe this will all blend together I don't think you'll be able to tell where I've patched the finish my friends old chocolate is looking better and better I had an epiphany last night that I'm gonna tell you about about old chocolate here in just a minute but in the meantime I just thought I'd mention to you about the staining and trying to match the stain you know matching paint is tough matching stain is impossible I mean it's just impossible you can do pretty good, but the fact that I am totally colorblind don't help nothing. But if you can see these two white areas, I had that matched with dark walnut stain in the dry form before the finish got on there. It looked like it just blended across there. You couldn't even hardly see it. I thought, okay, I finally got something that matched pretty good. Dark walnut, you wouldn't think, would be a good choice because... I don't know it just didn't seem like it would have been to me because dark walnut's usually pretty dark like blackish almost but yet it did look really good as soon as I put the finish on it it went light and that's rare most of the time whenever you put the finish on something it goes dark it doesn't go light so you know you just can't win it doesn't matter you, you know when you try to match finishes it won't let you win it just won't so I don't know what to say about that other than I tried and it's probably going to end up being that way. I may try some more, I don't know, but I have to sand it off to try again. Okay, now what was the epiphany I had last night? Well, this part of the wood is missing here, you can see. It needs to come over to the square point right here. So this from here to here, it's missing. Kind of a round over, if you will, but it's in grain. And the roundover would also be ingrain that you're trying to glue to ingrain. And I don't care what planet you're from, that doesn't work. Ingrain gluing never works. Even when you have a large surface area, ingrain to ingrain is not a good idea. I don't care what kind of glue you use. About the only kind of glue that you might get successful with would be CA glue, and that's only because it sticks to itself. And so what you could do is be put on a bunch of applications of CA glue on the end grain, fill all the end grain with CA glue, and then glue the two end grains together with the CA glue sticking to itself. That's the only hope you got for gluing end grain to end grain in my book. So how am I going to fix this? Well, my thought was I was originally going to put this on the sides and then generally there's a tiny lip there and I would actually be gluing it into like a corner. So I'd be gluing it to the side and gluing it to the back of this and I was hoping that was going to be strong enough. 
But after thinking about it last night and having my new epiphany, I have decided I'm going to do it in a totally different method and it's more complicated method, no question about it, but it'll be much stronger and it will last the lifetime of the instrument. I'm convinced of that. And that is, I'm going to actually route out half of the thickness of this top underneath the finish here. So in other words, I'm going to route out a little square area right here. I'm going to make a thin square area on the piece that I'm going to glue on here, have it stick underneath there, and then have the rounded part stick out and round it over. I hope that makes sense to you. Probably not a very good explanation. You'll just have to watch and see what I do here, and it'll become clear, I think, as I do it. Well, my friends, this is how I'm going to do this. I'm holding the top solid between leathers here. I've got leather under the clamp. I've got leather between the top and the board. I've, you know, anyway, it's all held firmly, but, you know, delicately at the same time. Now I'm going to use just this square ruler, and I'm just going to just arbitrarily mark off a square area that I'm going to route out. And I'm going to extend it over to the, like where this square area would be, would be about right there. So I'm going to extend it over there. And the reason I'm doing that is twofold. Number one, this has to go all the way over to there. But number two, there's a lot of tear out right here. And basically I'm killing two birds with one stone. I'm gonna route this all flat across here. And so that tear out will be now flat and re-glued and made solid as well. So it's kind of a good thing in a way. How am I going to do it? Well, I'm going to use the little proxon here and I'm going to just do the best job I can and hope for the best. I'm going to do it freehand because I don't know any other way to do this. This will either go real well or you'll be seeing a grown man cry right here on video. shining just over the hill there's no more rain just over the hill see the river jordan on the other side there's no more pain my life has been filled up well that went fine not i wouldn't say it went perfect but it went fine and now i'll take my little trusty two cherries chisel and clean it up a little bit and I didn't even go quite the full depth of the uh, tear out here, but almost. I'm going to just shave it down a little bit here. I might go just a hair deeper just to get rid of the uh, clean out. And I can go deeper just with this chisel, I think. And I think I will just do it that way. I can control it pretty well. That way I get rid of this tear out in this area here. To my Lord, but now I've seen that river Jordan I long to reach the other shore Just over the hill the sun is shining Well that looks pretty darn fine to me. That's good and flat and uh, gives me a good area to glue all this to. So the only negative is I'm seeing a little bit of tear out right here where the purfling goes. And I don't know, you know, like there's a little tear out between here and here. And that's from where the purfling got broke out. I'm tempted to go ahead and shave that off even, but I think I can clean that up afterwards. So I'm not gonna worry about that on this side. I'll worry about that from the top side when I start cleaning it up and putting the uh, purfling back in. Now we're gonna make us a patch to fit in here that we can, uh, you know, make this rounded edge on. And so we gotta find something that the grain kinda lines up with this grain if we can. That's the hard part, making it look good. Well, my friends, you can see I have a patch put in here. I mean, it fits it like a glove on the square and the ends and everything, just perfectly matches it. 
Now we have to work on the thickness and make it go protrude through here. You know, I had my doubts about these little wings that are trying to chip off. I'm going to go ahead and take them off. And the reason is because it's just going to make it too hard to match up. So I'm going to make this smooth around here. This is where the purfling is chipping out. It's already broken out in the biggest part of it, so might as well take off the rest of it here. This will make it a lot easier to match up. Okay, that matches pretty closely now. Okay, so now I can put my piece back in here and I can trace the bottom side now. And so basically I have to route this a good thickness of this away. And I can do that with the Proxon router as well. So now my only problem is holding it. So I think I'll just have to use double stick tape, stick this down and route this out. Well, my friends, I have got the piece stuck down to the table. I just, you know, made a loop of regular masking tape, stuck it to the table, stuck it to this, but that would roll. So then I just, put a little drop of CA glue in between the roll there, in between the two tapes, and that stops the tape from moving. So now it's locked down to the table, and if I want to peel it off, I just peel off the tape and it'll all come off, no problem. The CA glue is only between the two pieces of tape. So it won't hurt anything, but that is solid. It gives me a good base to route this out. I've also X'd off the part that I want to route out so I don't get confused and route the wrong side. And the only other tricky part is this thing has such a huge hole that, which I don't like actually, I prefer a very small hole because all of the work I do is very detailed and I'm always looking down through right at the bit. I don't care about all this extra open area. So I don't know, I think that large hole is gonna be a slight hindrance, but you know, it's gonna make it tip when I get to the ends, but I'll just have to fight that and just uh, make it work. So here we go. Just over the hill, there's no more rain. Just over the hills, the River Jordan. On the others. Well, that took it off pretty well. And now I'm just gonna clean it up with the chisel again, get it good and flat. And maybe even clean up the back edge a little bit so that it meets up perfectly. Actually, this would be the front or the outside edge of the violin doesn't have to be a perfect fit because the purfling is going to go through there anyway but the better fit the better I like it and I'm going to cut a little bit more depth into this and I could do that with the router too but just easier with the chisel at this point now that the Proxon has marked out the line. It's easier to take more depth off of this with the chisel. That looks pretty darn good. It's pretty flat. Let's see. Can I fit it up this way? I don't know if I can. Okay, it doesn't look like it's going to be deep enough yet. So I'm going to have to take off quite a bit more of this, actually. In order to do that, I'll take the X-Acto knife score it along here and then I'll take the chisel and cut the depth quite a bit deeper. I think that might work. I'm going to go ahead and peel it off of here and see how it looks. You got to be careful because you can break your part here if you're not careful. This is getting pretty thin. Okay, well, I'm actually going to take it down some more. It's still not quite thin enough through here. I can do this by hand, I think, without having to tape it back down. That's looking better. Don't know if I had that in camera, by the way, but that's okay. We're going to make this thing fit up. A lot of little hand fitting going on there, but... I think I've got it up pretty darn fine there now. It's almost 
thick enough. Got to go just a hair thinner on this part. Just a hair thinner. And it'll be fine, I think. So we got the part thinned way down here. You can probably see how thin it is. But it has to be thin like that so this sticks up high enough to round this off. And that's just about it right there. Wouldn't hurt anything if it was just a hair more on this side. I'm going to just scrape it a little bit on this side. And I'm also going to scrape it a bit on this side here to try to get a little more depth in this area. Again, this is where the tear out was and where the repair was. So this will actually be acting as a cleat for this repaired area right here too. So it's kind of a three-way fix here. It doesn't quite fit tight as a glove, but it fits pretty good. So we're going to glue that up now and then we'll draw this line around here and cut it out. And I think everything's going to look really good when we're done. My friends, while I was working on this and making this part, I was talking to Jamie Culpitz, if I pronounced his name right. I apologize if I didn't there, uh, Jamie. Anyway, talking to him on the phone, and if you remember, he was the jazz player that we met up in Canada on our trip through uh, Canada. And good picker, good old guy, and just enjoy talking to him. He had a question about some of that... Uh, binding that catches on fire and he was working on an instrument very similar to that and so we were talking about that and while we were talking about that I was actually carving this little piece and I've got it fitting just like a glove now it just fits perfectly and you can see the line I've put across there that I'm going to saw out so I'm going to go saw that out real quick on my small bandsaw with the fine blade and then we'll come back here and glue this in place well, I cut that piece out and now we can fit it in here. And I think you can see on this side it fits fine and on the back side it fits fine also. Just fits just tight. And that's what you want when you're fitting up something like this. Now we're gonna get the glue on it and clamp her down. No more pain. And of course, you know me. I'm going to clamp that up really well. I'll clean off the glue squeeze out first and then we'll get that all clamped up and let that set for a couple hours. And that's the way I chose to clamp it up. These have real thick rubber pads on them and that's a real good, won't mar the finish. And anyway, I've got her clamped up there and we'll let that set for a while and we'll get back to it later. Well, due to things that happen, old chocolate's been sitting for several more days. And here is the current state. That's what it looks like. Not real impressive at the moment, but I can tell you for sure that that's on there good and solid. That will not be coming off. And you know, if you would just glued this onto the butt end, it would have gotten knocked off in no time. But now I can round this off and make it match the rest of the instrument. And of course I'll have to stain it and you know put the oil varnish over it and everything. We're not completely finished with the oil varnish application here anyway, so that's not a big deal. So I'm going to start working on that right now and see if I can round that off a little bit. As I often do, I'm going to start at least, and I may change very quickly, but I'm going to start with my little finger plane. And I have the tooth blade in here because it will cut across the grain like this. So I'm just going to try to round it a little bit first and see if this plane will work on this. And in fact, the tooth blade might not be the best option. Let me try the smooth blade. And I don't know if it's even going to work real well or not because we're talking in grain and in grain is not that easy to cut. I may just have to go to a file right away. And I think I probably will. It's doing a pretty good job of, of rounding it off. So it's knocking off the corners pretty quickly. But I don't think it's going to smooth it very well. So I'll go to my files. And... 
I'm not sure which file I'm going to use. Probably this little double cut is a good one. My goal on these kinds of things is to, you know, by eyesight, you don't want to see where it starts and stops and things like that. You don't want to see any irregularities. You want it to just flow and be real smooth and clean. And you don't want to be able to feel it either, of course. We're getting very close to that already. Okay, now the difference is this inside area here where the purfling goes. I need to cut a channel in there and I also need to make this more like a lip. This comes around and then it dips down very quickly where the purfling is and then goes back up to the top there. So I've got to, you know, clean this out, dip it down. Maybe could do some of that with this finger plane. In fact, I'm gonna try first. And that does work. The one little complicating factor is that the top actually has a little whoop -de right there where it didn't get good and flat and level. I wished it would have, but things are as they are. I think I will just take my Dremel tool with a little tiny round burr and kind of grind this area and form it. I think I can do a better job with that and keep it really smooth that way. So let's give that a try. All right, I have a little diamond burr on my Dremel tool. This is a 150 grit diamond burr. You know, I think it'll work fine and do a smooth job, but there's a chance it could burn, so we'll know here in a second. That actually did a really nice job. It's very smooth across there now. Now I need to find a way to cut the purfling slot so we can extend this purfling from here all the way to there. It, it's probably just as easy to cut it with by hand with a knife. Here's a scalpel blade that are very sharp. Good friend, I believe Chuck sent me these, if I'm not mistaken. And yes, I'm just doing it by eye. As DeResta says, if it looks straight, it is straight. So, I do it by eye a lot of times, and uh, you know, you get used to doing it. You know, I'm not bragging that I'm an artist or anything, but I do kind of have an artist eye. I, uh, used to paint a lot and draw a lot and things and so you know it's not too difficult got my little hooked chisel blade there that I'm reaching into the, the cut and actually the cuts probably a little bit narrow I might have to open it up a little bit but that's okay it's always easy to go bigger so now, if you look at that, you can probably see a little binding channel there now. Hopefully the, it's not being washed out by the camera too much. Anyway, there is a little channel there that we can actually set a piece of purfling in, butt it up to this other piece of purfling, and go all the way to the end. And I believe it'll fit in there. We may have to adjust it a little bit. More than likely, the slot will be a little tight. This piece of purfling here is actually proud a little bit. I might actually either just cut it down or something. I'm going to work on that piece of purfling that's still left in there. It's kind of sticking up and, you know, I would prefer it be down level also to make it all look like one transition. So we're getting kind of picky here, but I, I want to make it look as good as I can make it look under the conditions. I don't know the timing of how these videos will come out to you because it's just impossible to predict. But in our shop talk, which I believe you'll see before you see this, you'll see where I organize all my purfling in a cabinet, all my binding and purflings and all those things. And it was a pleasure to walk over to that new cabinet and pick out a little piece of purfling. It was so easy to find. I don't know, it's hard to explain. It's a small thing, but it's a big thing to me to have it that organized. And so this little piece of purfling should fit in here pretty well. Actually, it's almost fitting. It just needs a little bit of clean out and we'll make that happen. Some folks might not understand that 
In addition to being decorative, the purfling actually serves a purpose, a structural purpose, in that it ties all of this grain together. You know, like the grain goes this way, and by that purfling going around here, it keeps that from splitting and breaking apart because it's glued in place and it ties all of that together. So there's actually a purpose to it in addition to just being pretty or decorative. That little tidbit didn't cost you any extra. It's just about fitting, but I can't make up my mind where the problem is. We could probably live with that. You can maybe see how it goes in there now. I'm gonna work on where it meets up to the other piece a little bit to just make that look better and where you can't really see the difference. And then I'm just looking at the end of the new piece to see that it's perfectly squared off. And I think it is, but I may just shave just ever so slightly a, a small amount off of it just to confirm that it is really square. Seriously, less than a hair. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, that's really looking nice now. So once we get this all colored back, you won't even be able to tell it, I don't think. I mean, except for the color, the color will never match perfectly, but other than that, you wouldn't be able to tell that it was chopped up like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the glue in there. And again, I'll be using my trusty tight bond to fill the Purfling. This is all wood purfling, by the way. This is this black, white, black is solid wood. And I squeeze it into place and then clean up all the squeeze out. And I press it down in there even tighter with the butt end of this little chisel just to make sure it's down in there as far as it can go. And I believe it is. That gave me a little bit more squeeze out, which we will clean up here with the damp towel and turn it over to clean it up even a little better and that's what she looks like right now we'll give that a little time to dry then we'll get that stained up and put the finish over it old chocolate's been sitting uh, drying on this purfling for far longer than it needs but that's okay and it's looking real fine. I think you can see it there, it, how it looks. Now we're gonna clean this all up and stain it. So once again, I go to my trusty finger plane and I will cut the purfling down because it's standing up proud. And I may have to go to the Dremel tool again to get down into the detail there and I think I will I think that just makes sense so I think I'm going to pull out the Dremel tool and it still has the little diamond round bit it says 150 grit but it's a very smooth abrasive it's very smooth <laughs> Well, I took a little more off up in here because this just wasn't level and, you know, it's just from all the breaks and things. So, you know, it's a double-edged sword. It removed some of the original finish color, but yet it leveled it out. So, you know, you just got to do what you think is right. And that's what I think is right because it just looked bad with the hump there. So now I'll take the uh, X-Acto knife with the round blade and blend it all. And I think I can even blend the actual purfling a little bit. Yeah, I need a smaller blade than that even. I'll have to look around and see what I've got. Well, good old friend Chuck came through again and he sent me this new tool and it looks like it's brand new. 
it's got a slightly curved tip on it and that little curve is just about what I think I need to get down in here. I haven't tried it yet but let's give it a shot and see how well that works. I think it's going to be just what the doctor ordered. No pun intended there Chuck since Chuck was a doctor. Wow. Yeah that's perfect. Just perfect. I can get in here and I can scrape it down level. And I'm going to blend some of the finished area to this also. Yeah, it's, I think that's just about perfect. I'm going to work on just this end here. It's still a little bit big, I believe. It's sticking back that way a little bit more than it needs to. I think I'm going to shorten this up a little bit. And the way I'll do that again will be with a file and I'm going to clean this file out. It needs some cleaning. And then I'm going to get in there and just tweak this up a little bit more before I stain it and then do a little bit of fine sanding. And I think we'll be ready to stain it and make it look really nice. To avoid going somewhere different and having to set up the camera, I'm just going to do it here at the desk and I've just got it up on a little block of wood. It just makes an easier camera set up. A little harder for me to do the actual work, but it'll be fine. Okay, and finally it off kind of square there right now, but that's okay. I'm just trying, going for symmetry and making the curve look good. This in grain files much harder than if it were flat grain. That's getting very close, but I think we still need to go more. All right, that's pretty close. I'm gonna go ahead and round that back off again because now I've got it real flat. Now I think it actually still needs more, so I'll do a little bit more of that filing off camera and get it where I'm satisfied with it, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Again, stain matching is one of the most difficult parts of all of this. I used dark walnut in places and it just didn't darken up enough to suit me. I mean, it looked perfect almost before I put the finish on. When I put the finish on, it lightened up. Most of the time, the finishes darken up. By the same company, Minwax, I'm using Espresso now, which is even darker than the dark walnut. It looks a little bit too dark at the moment, but you know, maybe it'll be closer in the end. I don't know. You know, it's just a guess. You can't really test this stuff. You think you can test it, but you really can't. Because unless you're putting it on the exact piece of wood, you don't know what you're going to get. I said it's just like the old movie Forrest Gump. It's just like a box of chocolates. You don't know what you're going to get. And that's the truth. Anybody that tells you different, they don't know what they're talking about. I mean, if you're doing the same thing over and over, a repetitive task, and you've done it millions of times, well then sure, you can pretty much guess what you're going to get. But this is different. When you're doing this, every piece of wood is different. You know, this new wood's going to stain different than the old wood. You just can't go by anything. You just have to use your gut, and that's all I can do. doing the best I can with what I got to work with and that's all I can tell you. This espresso actually looks pretty good. It's, you know it's pretty black or dark but when you wipe it off it lightens up. It looks pretty good. Now I'm a little concerned the new purfling I put in there is much whiter than the old white purfling in between. I mean, they match almost identically. It's just that the new stuff is seeming to hold the light better. I'm going to very carefully try to darken that back up. Just the purfling, just very light strokes here and only hit the purfling, the white purfling, to just leave it darker. And I won't wipe it off. That looks much better. Whether or not it ends up better once we put the finish on it, I can't tell you. But that's really not looking too bad, at least color-wise, in my mind. And again, 
you know you all know I'm totally colorblind so I go by hues I guess or something I go by something I don't know what I go by but most people tell me I do a pretty good job matching you know it just is never perfect I don't know if I should do this or not but I think I'm actually gonna take this espresso and go right over these light areas very lightly that looks really good it looks better than it did to me darkening it up a little bit probably will wipe right off if I use a paper towel on it right now but I think I'm just going to do that in these areas and let it try to dry we've got to put another coat of oil varnish over the whole thing and if this will blend you know hey more power to it it looks a lot better I like it a lot by doing this I'm hoping it's coming across in the camera but using this right over the oil varnish on those light spots is really making them blend in a lot to me looks a lot better now if this stuff will dry which I don't know that either for sure if it'll dry without being wiped up first that's to be seen too that looks a lot better to me all right so the bottom half there I have you know I've gone over those really light areas with the espresso dye or stain it's Minwax espresso stain and they look a lot better down here in this lower area that might be a little much there just gonna dab it back off lightly that looks pretty good okay so the bottom half there's been done and that looks pretty good look at the top half now you can see these two white lines I'm gonna attempt to get them to go away with this espresso and see what that does and I think you're gonna be amazed because at least for my money it's definitely better got a little bit too much on my brush I like to use this stuff dry on the brush not real wet all right well I've got this side done and I think you can see a significant difference between that side and this side so that looks a lot better in my book not perfect because you can still see it's a slight difference in color or something or shade or something but it blends better dark than it does light I'm gonna just dab it lightly to lighten it up just a little bit I don't know if that's better or not that might be a little bit too light again at least in a place or two so right here it got a little too light right there a little bit too light all you can do is what you can do and that, that's what I'm trying here I'm just trying anything I can to make it look that much better now we'll work on this bright white one here again keep in mind this had stain on it and it looked perfect before the oil varnish it just lightened up once the oil varnish hit it so I'm just hoping that this will dry in this color give it time to dry and then I'll put another coat of oil varnish over it and hopefully it'll stay I'm afraid the oil varnish itself will actually wipe it right off that's what I'm afraid of but you don't know till you try I'm gonna pat this down a little bit and then maybe come back and retouch it well for my money that looks a lot better I think you can tell on video even I can at least looking at the video finder it looks much better all right I'm gonna put a little more on the tail down here because it looks like it has lightened up again so I'm gonna let this all dry and I'll come back to it oh in a couple hours maybe something and we'll see about putting the oil varnish on it I think it's getting there well I started at 6 30 a.m. this morning it is now about 6 15 p.m. and I'm about ready to put the final hopefully final coat of oil varnish on chocolate here but first I want to scratch out 
with this steel wool, the finish helps the uh, new oil adhere to it a little bit better, number one. Just helps everything blend a little bit better. I put newspaper down to catch the little dust that this creates. Hope this will be the last coat. I really do. But I don't know. I kind of ain't holding my breath because it, it, it hasn't been going very well on the finish here. And as I'm doing this, I, I realize that my little effort with the espresso color was premature. I should have done that after I did this. But it was a good experiment, I guess, to know that at least I think it's going to look pretty close. I don't know. No matter what you do, it's not going to be perfect. That's the sad part of it. You just want it to be perfect, and it ain't going to be perfect no matter what I do. But considering how much damage this thing went through, the trauma it went through, it's still turning out pretty darn nice. Okay, got that cleaned up a little bit more. Now I'll see if I can touch it up one more time with this espresso finish, just to darken up those few places, trying to even them out. I hope it evens them out. I Again, you just don't know after you put the oil varnish on. Had a little too much on my brush, so it was getting too dark. I'm just going to try touching it up again, and lightly. This area right here is where the sound post pushed through the top. It's going to be a damaged area. Maybe you can even see it in there on the inside. There's a kind of almost like a round spot right there where the sound post pushed right through the top. So this thing got crushed pretty good. Once again, before I glue the back on, before I glue this to the sides, I should say, I will put a few calls on the inside in a few strategic places. I'm not exactly sure where those places are yet. I'll determine that when I get ready to do it. And right now I'm still working on this outside here, this finish. I don't know. It may not work at all. Doggone, you try so hard and the stuff just doesn't cooperate no matter what you do. Very frustrating part of it. Well, I'm going to just call that good enough and go for it and see what happens. Because that's about all you can do. You seriously just can work yourself into a frenzy trying to make this perfect and it just doesn't happen. Well, it looks a little better this time, maybe. In terms of the color match. If it doesn't rub back off or get worse here. Still just a little light actually, but it's probably because this is taking that stain back off a little bit. Yeah, I think that's what it's doing. Oh well. Kind of figured that would happen because why would it want to do anything less than that? Of course, I didn't let it dry very long this time, but I got to get this thing done. I've got too many hours in it. A lot of non-billable hours again that I just didn't even bother turning the time clock on. Probably got at least a dozen hours like that into it. And a dozen times 80 is a lot of free time. I just want to fix it up as good as I can and I don't want to go crazy charging people. Ah, oh, doggone it, just got light again in that area there. Doggone it, just will not cooperate. It's just crazy why it just has to not work. It's just like it has its own mind that says, nope, sorry, I am not going to cooperate. I am not going to let it be easy. No matter what you do, 
Too bad, so sad. That's kind of the way you just kind of get the feeling at some point after, you know, you become paranoid and you begin to wonder why this just will not cooperate. And that's kind of the way I'm feeling about this right now. Just doesn't seem like it wants to cooperate at all. You got to make sure you don't leave any runs in it. This stuff runs so easy. That's about as good as it's going to get, I think. May not be perfect, but it's not terrible. See, it got light again right in that area there, which aggravates me. But I may just touch that up tomorrow on top of the finish and buff it out and see what it looks like. I don't know. It just won't cooperate. And that's the best I can explain it. It just won't cooperate. Well, there's nothing else going on in the shop this evening, so I think I'll just leave it lay right here on my tabletop, and we'll take a look at it first thing in the morning. My friends, sometimes it's not easy being me. One of these times is right now, and this is looking good, and it probably will satisfy the customer but it's just not satisfying me. And that's the problem. You know, these different streaks and things are driving me nuts. And it doesn't matter how hard I try, it will not cooperate, period. I can put black magic marker on it, and now when I put the finish over it, it will still turn it back clear. I mean, it just, it just is doing that. I put the darkest stain I have on it, and it's going back relatively clear. It's making me mad. So, I should just be satisfied with it and just go with it. And somebody's going to say, that's a glue mark. You know, there's glue. And there's no glue there. In fact, it was bare wood. It was absolutely bare wood. And in this place, too. So, the point is, I think I'm going to strip the whole thing down to bare wood. That will hide a lot of these breaks and cracks and things. And then I think I'm actually going to airbrush the color on it, which will put the color on pretty much consistent all over. The negative is the name of this thing has been chocolate. And that's because the little girl at the time apparently thought that's what it reminded her of, the color or whatever. So it's going to probably change the color. I think, honestly, the color's probably already changed anyway because of putting the varnish over it. Like I said, it's just not easy being me. I just want it better than it is, and it's driving me crazy, and I think this is the only way I can make it better than it is. Here we go. <laughs>